So now I'm going to show you a RAM TIE portal. And also, you will learn how to prepare hardware configuration, whether you're going to work with a PLC SIM or a real PLC. So let's open TIE portal. It always takes a while. So in TIE portal, we have two views. One view is portal view, and it's uh, this one that we see right now. And to be honest, I don't use it too much. I think it's not really necessary here. So we'll just go to the project view. You can switch between the portal view and project view by clicking this button here. Since we're not going to use the portal view, let's go to the settings and change it so that we don't really see it every time TIA portal opens. We can change it here, start view. We can change it to project view. We can also select most recent view, but I'm just going to go for project view. And please remember that if you do something wrong with these settings, you can always reset to the default. It's not going to be a problem. Then after you will work for a while with TIA portal, you will have your favorite settings. And maybe you will have to switch between different machines. You use TIA portal on one computer and then you get a new computer or new virtual machine and you want to have the settings like you like them. So you can always export settings to file and import settings from file. So this is really nice. Next thing I want to show you is view for objects in overview. Overview is kind of a view in TIA portal. If you use step seven, overview is kind of a view that you used to have in step seven. In TIA portal, we have the project tree. So I don't really use the overview a lot, especially that it takes quite some time to load it, but sometimes I need to find something. So I use the overview and I prefer the details look than thumbnails. I can see much more. Next thing I want to show you is backup location. For these who, who don't know, backup is a place where your program is stored. So it's a really good practice to make a backup every day. When I'm working on a project, I'm usually making a backup every day so that if something goes wrong, the project gets corrupted or I accidentally delete something, I can always go back to the backup and I'm not losing my entire progress from the last month or few months. I'm just losing the few hours of work and I can just copy stuff from the backup. I strongly advise you to do your backups regularly. And the storage location for the backup is here. So you can choose a default location. Of course, when you're making backup every time, you can change it as well, but it's just more convenient to set a backup. I would use a separate location for every project, but in this case, I'm just going to use this location. And another really nice thing is user documentation. So we're not going to use it yet, but at some point I will want to show you how to create your own libraries that you can use in different projects so that once you create a blog uh, that you will use regularly, you like this blog, you add it to your library and you can create a help file. For this kind of blog, you create a PDF help file and then other people who use it can have a look what does this blog do? Like they, they don't need to read the code or you know, try to figure out what it does. They just open the help file that you create and they immediately know what the blog does, how it does it and so on. So I always select this check mark here and this is the place that is default. Uh, usually it would be somewhere else, but I, I leave it like here. For now, it's not that relevant for you, but in the future, it can be really helpful. Last thing I think I want to show you here is keyboard shortcuts. I personally use keyboard shortcuts quite a lot because they just make work much faster and more convenient. You can have a look through the shortcuts. Of course, you're not going to use all of them. You don't use most of the functions 
most of the time. I'm using maybe between 10 and 20 shortcuts that I use the most, but besides from that, most of them is irrelevant for me. Maybe for you, it will be more convenient to use other shortcuts as well, but you can, you can have a look to what shortcuts you have available here. And uh, yeah, as you see, there's quite a lot of them. Just check them out here. The settings are done. They're being saved right now. And they will have full effect after you restart the TIE portal. Let's start the project. Okay, let's create a new project. And I'll name it first project. First project for TIA portal tutorial. Okay. One thing, don't worry if things take a lot of time initially, because then you see it's actually funny, but after you switch on everything and uh, all the program starts to run and you start programming, actually TIA portal gets a bit smoother. So it works more quickly. It just takes more time to load some stuff in the beginning, I guess. And so I started the project. This is the project. As you see, there's some, there's some project tree, but there is no PLC in the project. So uh, I want to add a PLC. So I'm clicking add new device, double click. Now I have to give a name to the PLC. So it doesn't really matter what the name of PLC is in this case. If you are working on a real project in industry, probably your customer will have their nomenclature for their PLCs. So you will have to name them according to the systems. So you will have to name them according to the system that your customer uses, or you will have to name them according to the system that uh, your company uses. If there is no system, I usually give the name that would describe the best, the function of this PLC. All right, so I call it tutorial PLC and the PLC that I have, this is uh, Simatic S7-1200 CPU-1212C AC-DC Relay. So I go to CPU-1212C uh, AC-DC Relay. All right, and I have three PLCs here. So how do I know which one is the right? So I have a look around this PLC. There is this number here. It says 6ES7-212-1BE40-0XB40. 0, 0 so the window that could open right now, it's device configuration, which is an equivalent of hardware configuration in old step 7. So here we can configure different settings for our PLC and also if we have some more modules like we have additional inputs modules or outputs modules or pretty much anything that your PLC is going to control so for example drives or it has to communicate with some gateways or maybe it has to communicate with some encoders to get the position of, of some drive. All this other hardware is going to be set up in hardware uh, configuration, device configuration as well. Well, we only have PLC and right now. It's, it's the only piece of equipment that we have. So I'm just going to close it right now. I'm going to show you something more, what you can do in hardware configuration a bit later. Right now, I'm just going to close it. We have the PLC in the project tree right here. And then under the PLC in this tree, we have some more sections. I'm going to show you the most important ones. So online and diagnostics. Once we go online, we will see the status of the PLC right here. We will open this window and after the windows opens, we have a connection with the PLC. You will see the status of the PLC. All right. Now there is no PLC online, so we're not going to see it. Okay. Program blocks. In this section, your entire program is going to be there. So right now there is only OB1, which is the, the main 
operation block in the PLC, you can add new blocks. So you can add FCs, FBs, DBs, and other obbies as well. Okay, so you can uh, double click here to add new blocks. You can also add some folders to create some order in your program, create some sections, so to say, in, in the project tree. Uh, where you can divide your program into, for example, technological functions or or whatever it is. Technology objects, I'm not using this a lot. Actually, I've used it only once and I'm not a big fan of it. But Siemens provides you with, with some pre-programmed functions like PID, like access control. I'm not using it a lot. Maybe I will in the future but for now we don't need it. External source files. So you can generate source files. Some people generate source files and uh, especially if, if they have really standardized code, then they just import it into TIE portal and there is less programming inside of TIE portal. A lot can be done automatically outside of it. The next very important section is PLC tags. What is a tag? Tag is a name you assign to a memory uh, area inside of your PLC. We'll talk about tags much more later on because they are a very important part of the program. So next we have PLC data types. And PLC data types are a very complex topic and they can be very useful as well, to be honest. You don't really have to use PLC data types when you're programming, but they can make it so much easier. This is very important. You can create your own data types, but I'll talk about it much later. You will have some basics of the programming because it's a bit more advanced. Watch and force tables are used to watch and force values in the PLC. I mostly use it for inputs and outputs when I do the I.O. check. Okay, next thing that's important, traces. Traces are very useful while debugging your code because it allows you to watch real time what exactly is happening with, with a tag, with a variable inside of your PLC. I will also want to show you much more about the traces in the future. All right, that's all for now. So please join the Facebook group. The link to the group is in the description and see you in the next video.